back in Crunch Gym with training legs. Now we've had sort of six, seven weeks since the last competition, so the, the kind of volumes can start increasing up. And so is the amount of sets we do on each muscle group and the amount of exercises we do full in muscle groups. So if it increases slightly, we lean more towards like a hypertrophy building style workout, which means the sets are kind of higher reps than perhaps they have been, where we may have done some power building sets of four or five reps. Now we're looking at taking them reps really no lower than eights or 10 reps, and anywhere up to 20 reps. So really squeezing, contracting the muscle and breaking the muscle down. Uh, again, we're still trying to increase the loads as we go, but it's all about uh, increasing the volume, increasing the intensity, and the time under tension on the muscle through this next phase of training. So we're on leg day. We're gonna start by isolating the quads with a single leg press. We're gonna use a hammer strength single leg press to do that, because I find it's probably one of the most underused and uh, underrated uh, quad exercises in the gym. But it's fantastic if you get into it, no bouncing at the bottom of the movement. Really squeeze the quad all the way to the top, but don't lock your knees. And then control, 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 really slowly on the way down. Now, if you don't control it down and bounce off the bottom, you miss loads of the effort of the exercise. And this one, that's what people tend to do because they want to move the weight. So don't worry too much about the weight. We're gonna take the reps up to 20 on this. So we're gonna look at four or five sets of 20 reps, increasing the weight where we can and making the, the quad muscle fail. So let's have a look at that. Yeah. <laughs> 
so I've done a leg press now, five sets of 20 reps. So the legs are pretty fatigued now, um, and so we're going to move on to the squat now. So the weight's going to be lighter than what we've done when we were doing our power building. I worked up to five plates. This is the first set, so we'll start on a couple of plates, see how the legs feel after what we've just done. Put it through uh, 500, sorry, one, I think 40, 80, 120, yeah, 200 reps on the leg press we've done uh, on the legs. So now obviously this one's going to feel a lot tougher than it did before. Um, we're looking at 12 to 15 reps here, so we're going to work ourselves nice deep range, squeezing at the top, trying to contract the quads throughout the entire range of motion up and down. No just dropping the weight and powering up, we're going to try and control the weight down using the quad muscle and then driving up using the quad muscle. So this is more engaging the muscle than just sheerly moving the weight. So um, yeah, so 12, 15 reps, so yeah. Okay. Okay, so I've done 15 reps as a warm up, 12 felt too easy. Uh, and one of the pluses of doing the power building squats that we have been doing is we're used to heavy, heavy load on your back. So now when we move out to a more moderate weight, it feels much more comfortable. We're looking at a second set now of squats, we're going to do four of these. And we're working out probably a plate each time, something like that, see how the legs hang out. Uh, it's all about the depth for me, so I start buttoning out the the bottom part of the, the squat because my legs are tight, there's no point adding more weight. So we'll stick to that weight and focus on getting deep. Uh, if you haven't got a spar at home, the power cage is awesome. You'll stick the safety bars in at your low point and you, you know, you're safe and you can go down low. You know, if you don't come back up, the bars will catch it. Whereas in a, a, a squat rate, a cage like this, if you're going down, you're going down. It will catch it eventually, but you'll be like nose to the floor. So. It's always worth having that, that little bit of peace of mind whether you've got a good spotter. Unfortunately, I've got Z who tends to be looking at himself in the mirror rather than me. Um, but you know, I manage. So, yeah, I mean, if, if I was trained on my own, I couldn't use a power rate cage. We're going to smash this set out now. This one's for Samson Athletics with some awesome clothing. This one, the live fast, die strong. So, got some great apparel if you want to check it out. Let's see what we can do. exercise now so we're keeping it basic we've gone on to the full five degree leg press now we've done different uh, foot placement slightly because of the machine we first used and obviously I always believe in squatting with your strongest most comfortable balanced stance which for most people shoulder width so now we're on a platform we can adjust our foot position if we want and I'd like to 
try and emphasize the outside of the quad or the outer sweep of the quad. So to do that, you bring your feet closer. So you're pushing with the outside of your foot to transfer the load on the outside of your quad. So my feet are gonna be almost touching, quite close. Because of this, your knees are gonna hit you right in the chest. So make sure you do get down so your knees touch your chest before you push up or you get no range of motion. Again, don't lock the knees. And again, we're looking at hypertrophy. So the rep range is 12 to 15 on here, four sets of that. We'll then try and increase the load as we go and maybe keep the reps where we can, having to drop them if the weight becomes more demanding. All right, so here we go. So easy warm up set is. Now, key to this is when you come low, you'll see if I go too low, if you zoom down here, you'll see my bum curl off the pad about there. Now, you don't want to get to that point. You want to stop just before your hips roll forward. So don't let that happen. So keep it there. Too much hip roll will give you a bad lower back ache, cause some damage over time with a greater load. And don't talk while you lift this, it's fucking tiring.
Okay, so now we've come over to the lion leg curl. So obviously very hamstring dominant exercise after and all we've done so far has been very quad dominant. We've just finished that nasty ass uh, leg press, triple, triple drop set. So that's tiring, that's hard work. Your legs now, your quad should be fired up, ballooned up and really, really tired, full of lactic acid, feel like there's not, not much left in them. Now you may also feel fairly worn out and drained and tired and almost faint at this point, but that's good, that's because you've, you've moved a lot of the blood, a lot of the oxygen through your body into these major muscle groups being your legs. So it makes you feel a little light heavy. One of the kind of the best ways to bring yourself back to life, apart from stop training, is by moving the blood to the back of the leg. So if you do some lion leg curls now, You'll be surprised, no matter how knackered you feel, by the time you finish a few sets of these, you'll feel back to life because the blood's really pulled in your quads at the moment. And this will start moving it back around your body, taking, transferring it across to your hamstrings, and you'll feel better in yourself after a few sets. Plus, I like to do additional hamstring work on a quad day, uh, and then some slight quad work on a hamstring day later in the week. So, line hamstring curl, I think probably the best hamstring exercise. Uh, as long as you can get a good full contraction, keep your hips low on the pad, drive them into the pad and don't lift your bum up as you bring your heels up. Okay, so a tip on the leg curl is uh, similar to as I've described on the biceps. This is your leg biceps. So it works the same way. So when we, everyone contracts this up, squeezes their heels up towards their backside and a hard squeeze at the top, what a lot of people do not do is allow that stretch to come all the way down so your legs are almost dead straight and your legs flexed out and you contract your hamstring from a straight position. So what that means is by flexing the hamstring in its stretched position, before you contract it, you'll get the fullest range of motion and the greatest muscle torque through the movement. A lot of people don't do a full stretch, they come short of that and they keep in almost like the three quarter movement of a hamstring curl, which keeps the tension on at the shortest range of the movement, but not at the longest. So if you can work the full range of the hamstring, you'll get far better development over time. You may find the load needs to come down slightly, but over time that will creep up and you'll always get the best muscle look and the, me the, the nicest uh, symmetrical muscle shape if you can work the fullest range of the muscle.